previously on the Cowboy Way, Alabama. Hey guys, we got a problem. He don't want them anymore. Who waits till the last minute to change the price? Who does that? A cattle deal gone bad leads the Cowboys to a new venture. I think we just need to start trading cattle more. I think we should have been doing that a long time ago. <laughs> Everything's already booked for the deal, and now it's not going to happen. Cody gets some bad news when a longtime rodeo client backs out of a contract. That rodeo we've had for six years, Yeah. we don't have it no more. I'm sorry. And now, on this episode of The Cowboy Way, since y'all are uh, trading cattle more now, I've been looking for some crossbred heifers. You think you might can see about finding me some? The Cowboys get their very first customer. We can find the cattle. I mean, since we lost that rodeo, I've been thinking about putting on my own rodeo. Cody wants to go his own way in the rodeo world. If I'm gonna pay it already, might as well have a rodeo. Might as well. I got a guy coming by here. He wants to be a cowboy, but he's probably gonna have to stay here. He's staying with us? Mm-hmm. Bubba invites another cowboy to bunk at his house. Bubba, why would you do that? Y'all got any leads mm. on cattle from Mr. Chuck Ty? Got some cattle out in Texas. Mm -hmm. And they're droughting out there pretty bad right now. After a long drive to Texas. He said he had a good set of black cows. And he sent me any pictures. He sent some pictures, but I can't get them to load. The cowboys quickly learned brokering's not as easy as they thought. I thought you said you had some crossbred cows. He's here about straight angus. We just get these cows, get them pushed up here to these pens. Of course, we got it in a different spot. I decided to put it over here yesterday in the shade because I thought it'd be a little bit easier on us. Thank that you. shade ended up paying for itself. Thank you. Today, we've been hired by Mr. Chuck Tice to gather his cattle. Chuck was the president for the Alabama Cattlemen's Association for several years, but he just stepped down. We're going to run these cattle up into a pen, sort the yearlings off, put them on a trailer, and take them to another pasture. We're going to check the mama cows, see how far along they are, and the little baby calves they have on their side, we're going to kick them back out in the pasture with the mamas. Y'all got a bride long bar? Yeah, there's one hanging right there on the front of that trailer. All right, thank you. Where's your bridle? Huh? Where's your bridle? It's with my saddle. Where's your saddle? At the house. You went in a hurry this morning, wasn't you? <laughs> I was a ripping and a snorting and a tearing getting here. Look, when you're riding a horse without a saddle, it's like riding a bicycle without a seat. I mean, today's gonna be painful, but the most painful part about it is the, all the slack I'm gonna catch from Booger and Bubba. It's gonna be a long day. <clears throat> Let's get these cattle pinned before it gets too hot. All right. Come on, Cody, keep up. Trot up here, let's go. Look. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Come here, dog. Buggy. Heck yeah. Go. He'll come back in a minute. Let's tag him to the pins. Get behind. Look at this old aggravating, soggy sucker. Heck yeah. Yep, yep. Got it right here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> These cattle get handled pretty regularly, and that makes it nice. When the cattle know what they're doing, they're used to dogs, they're used to horses, and used to going to the pens, that's when your job gets to be fun. Most cattle we handle running off over here, running over there, running down a highway, and that turns out to be a job. Things are going pretty smooth today. Oh, yeah. All right. Just right. I'm just glad to get off a dang horse. That'll learn you want it, bring your saddle. We got the cattle pinned up. We're gonna take the bulls off the cows, wean the big yearlings, mouth the cows, make sure if there's anything that's really old, doesn't have a calf, we're gonna sell it. I mean, it's just a, it's another day at the office. Pretty simple day. Yep. Got it, got it. 
Check her teeth first thing. Broke mouth. Step up, baby. There's Mr. Ty. Get her, yeah. Hey, hey man, fella. Good hey, morning. How y'all doing today? Good to see you, bud. Good to see you, Mr. Good Chuck. to see y'all, yeah. Good to see hey, you, Fake Bubba. Yeah. Cody, good to see you again. Good to see you, my friend. Well, looks like y'all getting with it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're trying to beat this heat before it gets too daggone yeah, hot. Yeah, I know. It's been rough. Let's put this bull on the truck. Well, Mr. Chuck Ty stops by to check on us to see how everything's going, and everybody knows Mr. Chuck around town. He's a kind of a big deal. I mean, his nickname is Big. He doesn't go by Chuck. He goes by Big. So. Obviously, he's a pretty big deal. No cows are getting kind of thin. You don't even have any over at the Terry place. That's true. I still got some grass, but just don't have the cows. Yeah. Man like so. you needs to buy another set, don't you think? Well, I kind of had that on my mind. Really? I'm kind of looking around, see if I, maybe I can find some crossbred heifers, maybe. Kind of hard to find good ones anymore, you know? Mm. Well, Mr. Chuck, we've been wanting to do a whole lot more trading cattle uh -huh. and less cowboy. I see. We figured it's cooler. Yeah, I see. Cattle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can sit in some air conditioning. Yeah, and do there that you go. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Well, since y'all are uh, trading cattle more now, I've known y'all for a long time, and I trust you. I know y'all good fellas. I've been looking for some crossbred heifers. Yes. And uh, you think you might can see about finding me some? We can find the cattle. Okay. And the cattle's out there. We know enough people. How many cows are you looking for, you thinking? Probably a load, maybe even two if they price right. Mm -hmm. We just have to see what, they, see what they're bringing. Mr. Tice is wanting to buy cattle, and we're wanting to trade more cattle. This is a perfect opportunity to do business with somebody we're already doing business with. Well, I sure appreciate y'all working my cows. Y'all always do a good job. And yes, I, yes, I do sir. appreciate it very much. All right, I don't want to hold you fellas up anymore. Okay. Y'all be on the lookout for me. We'll yes, talk sir. about it some more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Chuck. Good to see y'all again. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Hey, we'll keep the weather out for you. All right. We appreciate it a lot. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank you. Appreciate yes, sir, you work with us working see the cows. Well, shoot fire. That's good news, ain't it, fellas? Getting paid to work in man's cattle. Now he wants to pay us to go find him another group of cattle. Hey, that's what I always say, you don't pass up a job. Right. It might be a small job, but it might lead to something bigger. I got plenty of free time on my hands now. I'll find a good set of cattle, boys. I got daggum more time I ever had in my life. I lost one of my best rodeos. You lost your rodeo? The one you've been putting on every year, you I lost it? rodeo. Six years, I've had that rodeo longer than I've known my wife. Wow. That's a fact. Huh. Well, what, what made thing? you lose it? I had a signed contract, handshake. But that's a fact. Backed out of it. Hmm. And I hate that, Harris. I do too. Well, don't let it bother you too bad. Sometimes when things become blessings. Know. Anyways, I, I'd like to help look for them cattle as much as I can because honestly, I want to get my mind off of it, you know? And that's well, you need some extra income now. For Mr. Chuck to give us this news that he wants us to buy this cattle, it could not have come at a better time for me. I'm still trying to lick my wounds from losing my rodeo, and I'm really wanting to stay busy on another task, something I love to do. So this just gives me something to do to get my mind off of all the negative stuff going on. Well, let's get back to work on yeah. these cattle. Get it done. Hey, Grandma. Hey, Booger. What are you doing over in this part of the woods? <laughs> I just come by to see you. How you feeling? Well, that's good that you came by. Yeah. You act like you're tired today. I stay tired nowadays. Well, you're just gonna have to slow up a little. <laughs> I know it. So much going on. You know, I recently got some bad news. I've got a piece of lease property that they're gonna turn into farmland. I've got to find a new home for my family. Now, it's kind of been weighing heavy on my mind, and the only person I know to go talk to about this, and that's Grandma. I think I'm going to end up losing that little piece of lease property I got. And, you know, I just got to find another piece of property lease, because I'm going to have to move them cattle off of it, and I got to have somewhere to put them. I know you do, son, but that's a problem, too, finding another place to lease. Everybody has their land leased already, and uh, but you need to also be looking for a place to buy. Get real serious about that. Yeah. You know, the fact that I might be losing my lease property, that's just another hurdle I'm gonna have to jump. I'm already looking for land for me and Jacqueline to be able to build on and live on. Now you're gonna lose your lease property on top of that. I've got to find me and Jacqueline a place and my cows a new home. If I were you, I would 
try my best to find something to buy. Right. And I hope and pray that you find something before you have to sell your cattle. No, you're right. I've been looking for a place to buy. I just hadn't been quite as serious. You just get busy working and... I know how that is, Booger. Yeah. Just have to keep looking. If I just got another place leased, heck, a year or two, I'll be in the same boat I am now. Losing a piece of leased property is always stressful. But you know, Grandma has a good point. There's probably the kick in the pants that I really need. Get on out there, find me and Jacqueline some land, a place to build a house, and a place to raise cattle that belongs to us. You know, Grandma's right, as usual. Three things you gotta look for. You gotta find a spot that's good for Jacqueline because she has a long way to travel to work, good place for Matthew to go to school, and a good place for you to buy. <laughs> yeah. You and Jacqueline know what you can do and what you can't do, but you need to sit down and go over everything and go from there with it. Well, I'll let you go. I guess I'll get out of here. Well, I'm glad you stopped by, son. I wish I could help you more with your oh. problem, but... That's the way it goes. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way it goes. Mm. The way the old ball bounces. All right, well, I love you. I'll talk to you later on. I'll put my feelers out, too. Thank you. Coming up. You know, I want to stay for a couple weeks up here, and uh, you know anybody around here where I can possibly stay? Well, uh... Bunch of heinous cows. They ain't the cows we come to look at. Where's your crossbred cows at? They are thin, ain't they? Well, let's get out and make sure we at the right place. Hey, Andrew, if you don't mind, buddy, just weed eat around that round pen right there. Sure. And pick up the limbs and toss them out, because I just bought another horse, and we'll put her in there and go to training on her. Not a problem. I got right, it. buddy. So my buddy Andrew's in town right now, and it's going to be a real nice today to catch up with him, because I haven't seen him in five years. And you know, Andrew's pretty good help, and he's offered to give me a hand today. So while he's here at the ranch, I'm going to put him to work. Here, let me let you put this little right here. You can go ahead and drop that in. That'll be fine. I've been doing this a long time, so I, I got my gloves on all the time. Yeah, right? My hands have gotten used to this kind of work, so before long, you won't need them either. So y'all stay pretty busy? Yeah, man, we stay busy all the time. We don't ever quit. We just find a good place to stop, you know? Right. All right, hold that one for me. I ain't seen you in five years. What have you been doing? Oh, I've been working at a, as a hand. Um, you know, just, just working as a day hand yeah, here and there? Day, as a day hand and yeah. a couple different places. There's not a lot of constant, um, constant gigs that I can just yeah. rely on. I've been looking for some, haven't been able to find any, so. So what was your last job? Uh, more of an office job. Oh. Yeah, mm. dealing with uh, paperwork and computers and I kind of feel like I need to get back to my passion and being out here. Yeah, I, uh, I spent quite a bit of time over Mississippi. I helped my wife's father and his company and man, I went from doing what I love to being cooped up in an office every day. Right. And uh, it drove me nuts. Yeah. That's where I am right now. Yeah. I'm ready to get back out here and, and do what I love to do. Find something that you love, you can make money, you'll never work a day in your life. So you think there might be some uh, consistent work out here for me? Yeah. We're really busy all the time. And uh, I know a lot of people around here, a lot of ranchers, and uh, they're constantly calling us to come help them pin their cattle, work their cattle, you know, catch wild cows, whatever. But we're kind of taking on a new business venture. We're going to do a little less day working and try to do something a little different. Right. And with us stepping down and not doing so much day working around here for other people, I'd be willing to hook you up with them. Man, I'd love that opportunity. But I have one problem. What's that? I don't have a place to stay. You know, I want to stay for a couple weeks up here. And uh, you know anybody around here where I can possibly stay? Well, uh, I could probably let you stay here for a couple of weeks. If it's only for a couple of weeks, um, I don't have a problem with it. Man, I'd be, I'd be tickled. When you're a cowboy and you're starting out at a new place, you know, it's not uncommon for somebody to come up and say, hey, can I stay with you tonight or can I stay with you for a few weeks? I understand what it's all about. I've actually taken in cowboys before and put them up for several months, so this is no news to me. I'm all for Andrew staying with us for a while, but I'm gonna have to butter my wife up and uh, kind of convince her to say yes. I need to talk to my wife. Sure. And see what she says about it. Um, I mean, I got plenty of room. I don't. I don't think she'll have a problem with it. But if she, if she does, I'm pretty good at persuasion. So, 
I can get her talked into it. Sure. And then plus only if it's for a couple of weeks, you know, that'll, that'll help out. That'd be great. All right, buddy. How you doing? I've been better. Mr. Bo is my cousin. He has been putting on rodeos for 40 years. I might as well get advice from Mr. Bo. He's done been there, done that, got a gold buckle to prove it. You know, why not get advice from a man like him that knows every in and out of the business? Uh, I don't know one way to say it. Uh, that fair rodeo we've had for six years? Yeah. Uh, they backed out of their contract. Uh, they right. didn't give him no rhyme or reason. I mean, they they just called and said that uh, we're contracting with somebody else. So, you know, I tell you when you started, this ain't for everybody. It's kind of a cutthroat deal. I had a committee, uh, you know, folks come in and get one of mine that I'd had for 30 years. Well, they sure don't want to give up by no means, but man, it sure put a, it just, a well, rock in my gut. Well, about it, I mean, you, we can either fix it or dwell on it. Dwelling on it ain't gonna get us nowhere. So it sounded to me like we need to figure out something else to do. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Mr. Bo, since this happened, I'm really thinking about just stepping out there putting my own rodeo on. Not worry about a committee, start it from scratch, finish it where it may lay, you know. I'm gonna play the hand I'm dealt. You know, dealt a pretty rough hand. Let's go out and start a brand new rodeo. Wow. I mean, do you, what's the pros and cons to that? Well, the pros is you get to keep all the money for is any. All of, that, all of it. All of it. That's the upside to it. That's the downside. Bad now. I mean, you the get downside to all that is you got to get out and raise that money. That's the worst job of putting on a rodeo. I'd rather clean out the porta potties. I'd rather put up the arena. Anything to sell sponsorships. Hmm. My deal and should be yours is long-term. Mine are long-term rodeos. I'm not interested in doing any rodeo in the world one time. I want to do them year after year after year. Yes, sir. And that's what I've been able to do for the past 40 years. The first year is important, though. It's important very important. To... A lot of people are going to come to see what you can do. Yes, you know, sir. some of them are going to come to see make it or fail, you know what yeah. I mean? And it's a lot of hard work. We've talked about it over and over. It's a lot of hard work, especially if you're going to do it by yourself. Mr. Bo, you answered all my questions, man. And um, I mean, I. I would love to say I'm extremely excited to do it, but I know what kind of work it's gonna entail, you know, but I'm gonna go home and talk to Misty, and um, as long as I have your full support and the blessing of the PCA, man, um, I'm gonna do my best to make it a good rodeo, wherever it may be. After talking to Mr. Bo, I'm a little nervous still because it's a big risk. I'm spending my money, mine and my wife's money, our little boy's college fund. It's coming out of our pocket to produce this rodeo. So I really want to talk to Misty and make sure she's on board with it. I know she will be, but if I don't have her full support, I'm not going to do it. I appreciate your time. All right, Cody, come back soon. And I'll be in touch. Bring, bring that boy back. You better say bye to Mr. Bo. See you later. Coming up. I talked to two guys yesterday. Got some cattle out in Texas. Mm -hmm. We can make a trip out there, like you were saying, in, in two days, drive across three or four different places and have a group built up. Come on. Look like Grandma's here. Hey. Hey, Mom. I told you Grandma was here. How are y'all? Come here, baby. You better come kiss Grandma. You better come kiss Grandma. Oh. Has Daddy been mean to you? He is, damn. Well, what in the world are you doing here? Well, Misty called me. I uh, wanted to know if I could come keep Carter. Where is she? She didn't tell me. She was kind of, you know, wanting to know if I could come watch him. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I had to run to Mr. Bose. Really? Um, I mean, since we lost that rodeo, I've been talking to him about, you know, what's the next step. Mm-hmm. And I gotcha. I've been thinking about putting on my own rodeo, and he told me all the... The ins and outs? Yeah. You want your cowboy boots? There you go. Thank Are you. those dirty? Of course. There he is, aren't they? Did he give you a lot of good advice? And first of all, he told me all the stuff that is bad about putting on your own rodeo. And he told me about all the stuff that's good. I don't want it to be a committee rodeo. I want it to be where the only person I have to answer to at the end of the day is the good Lord above. So I work for myself 100%. I make all the money or I lose it all. I think that's great, baby. 
I'm just glad I got that out of the way with Bo and he agreed to help me because I feel obligated to the people. All the contract acts and all the labor for that rodeo, in my mind, I have to pay them regardless if the rodeo happens or not. Right. So I feel better, if I'm gonna pay it already, might as well have a rodeo. Might as well. Mm -hmm. So with all the stuff we got going already, now I gotta get out and find brand new sponsors, brand new vendors, buy more ads and TV, buy more ads and radio. I mean, I've got to just start from nothing. Was there anything else we can help you with, me and your dad? Mom, I mean, there's nothing really y'all can do at this point. I I've got to find a venue. My mama knows the rodeo business. She was Bo's secretary for years. She's been around rodeo since I could walk, and I really want her support and I want her help because she knows the ins and outs as well as I do of what it takes to put on a rodeo. Do you have any clue where you're gonna find one at? I, don't, I mean, I could put it on in one of our cow pastures, mm -hmm. but I mean, the cost is even bigger then and the risk of the weather, raining or storming during the rodeo, I like to find a covered arena to go put it at. You trying to stick locally or? I'm gonna stay local. Close to home. I'm gonna stay local. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep the money in this county. That's my goal. And Bo did say something that really struck a chord for me today. He said, never go into a rodeo for it to be a one year rodeo. Yeah. Cause nobody can take it from me. Yeah. Cause it's my rodeo. Just a yearly thing, huh? Yeah. Well son, you know, anything you've ever done, you've always succeeded in. And this blessed. definitely is not your first rodeo. That's and it won't be your last. That's for sure. Mama, I really appreciate it. You're welcome, baby. I love you. I love you too. Mm. He's brought me eight pair of shoes and none of them match. You had better teach him the different sizes. Thank you. <laughs> We're gathering these cattle off of this pasture because they've ate it down to the ground. And now it's time to load them up onto a trailer and haul them over to a big, thick, green pasture. They've already done their job in this pasture. Now it's time to move them on to the next plate of food. Have y'all got any leads mm. on cattle from Mr. Chuck Tice? I screenshot some the other day. Look here. Ain't nice. bad. Nice little brain of heifer. Yeah. I talked to two guys yesterday. Got some cattle out in Texas. Mm-hmm. And they're droughting out there pretty bad right now. Really? Heck yeah. You know what it means when you dry, you ain't got any grass. Yep, well, if they're gonna sell some cattle, they ought to be pretty cheap. We've got something to feed them down here. I'm thinking Texas is a place we need to start looking. We definitely need to find us and chuck some cattle because that'll be a way for us to make some commission. Mm -hmm. Might be one of the first customers we can get this exactly. ball rolling a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. Have us yeah. a customer for life. That's a good way to get started. You know, the last few days, us guys, we've been looking for cattle for Mr. Tice. I've been talking to a lot of people and it looks like right now, Texas is a place to go buy some cattle. It's a buyer's market out there. They're going through a bad drought and there's a lot of cattle coming to town that needs to be sold because they know if they hang on to them, the cattle are gonna get thinner and thinner and thinner, not counting they don't have any hay put up. So therefore this winter, it's gonna get really rough. The best thing to do, a lot like football, just punt the ball and regroup again. If you hadn't have sold your dang Bramers, you could have sold them to Mr. Chuck. Instead of selling off on them, that'd have been perfect. We wouldn't have to go to Texas. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a good thing I sold them when I did because I'm losing another lease over there. Really? Yeah. I've been thinking about this Texas deal for quite a while. About seven, eight years ago when they had that bad drought for so long, I bought all the cattle I could afford, which wasn't much, but they made money. Yeah, I still remember them two heifers. <laughs> <laughs> but them cattle made money. We can make a trip out there, like you were saying, in two days, drive across three or four different places and have a group that's built up. We got grass, we got the funds to buy the cattle, we got the know-how and we know the people. Now all we need to do is get up and get after it, make some more money. I would love to go to Texas. Reason being, here's why. Since I lost my dang rodeo, I'm not fooling with committees no more. We don't have a committee we fool with, we put it on, pay all the money. From now on when I put on a rodeo, it's gonna be my rodeo. I ain't got nobody to answer to but myself. If it loses money, it's out of my pocket. So me riding to Texas with you two up front, one driving, one cackling, I'll be able to sit in the back seat and really do some brainstorming. Well, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and head on out of here, go home and get everything in order so we can head to Texas, because we're all on the same page here. Hey, I'm man. in. I'm in. Let's go. All right, y'all come up with a game plan, let me know. See Hold ya. on, pull off my dang saddle.
Daddy's cooking breakfast for you and Mommy. He is. He's cooking Mama's favorite thing, eggs. Whee. What's going on in here, babe? Oh, good morning. Good morning. I'm cooking and dancing with Andy. Andy. There's Mommy. Say hey to Mommy. <laughs> Move her out of the way, honey. I'm fixing to flip this bacon. What are you and Daddy doing? Just trying to do something nice. You always cook for me and do something sweet for you. But don't worry about nothing. You just go over and sit down and relax. It's nice for Bubba to get up and cook me breakfast, but I know him too well. He's definitely buttering me up for something. Why are you really cooking breakfast? Did you buy something? Did you buy a saddle? You're about to ask for forgiveness. Can a man not just cook breakfast for his wife? Oh. Make sure you eat your eggs too now. I love eggs. Oh, or the egg. Andy done popped the yolk. Uh, Ew. Take it. What? No. So what do you want to talk to me about? Seriously. Well, you know, Andrew, he's been enjoying himself down here, and he's, uh, he's been wanting to stay down here and, you know, kind of move down here. And I told him I think that'd be a great idea. I could use him. I can get him set up with some other guys that would need some help. He said, that's all great and all, but he kind of has to have a place to stay. And let me take a wild guess. You volunteered at our house. Kind of. Bubba has a huge heart, and I absolutely love that about him. But asking Andrew to stay with us before running it by me is so annoying. Having a house guest for an extended period of time isn't the problem. It's the fact that my husband doesn't consult me on it. So I didn't think you'd have a problem with it. Wow. I don't. I don't have a problem with helping him out while he gets on his feet. I don't. I really don't. But this is not going to be some long-term situation. Did you tell him that? Mm, kind of. How long did you tell him he could stay? Or did you even put a time limit on it? I didn't put no time limit on it. That's a big difference. I knew you'd be all right with it. Coming up. Bubba does this to me all the time. He always has these random people come stay with him and help work or whatever it is. But I always find out last minute, and I hate it. What's up, Andrew? Hey, partner, I'm here. Man, yeah, come on in, buddy. Bubba does this to me all the time. He always has these random people come stay with him and help work or whatever it is, but I always find out last minute and I hate it. Kaylee, come downstairs. <gasps> Andy, look, we got company. Well, hey, look who it is. Oh, Andy, say hey to Andrew. Say hi. Well, hey, how are you? She's being bashful. Howdy. Oh. And there's Kaylee. Hey, Good how are you? you? Good to see you. Good. Did you meet Andy? I did. Yeah. She's so <laughs> cute. Yeah, she gets that from her daddy. No. She's all mama. You ready to stay with us? I am. I'm excited. Yeah. I think Bubba is, too. Yeah. I'm a little questionable. He told me last minute that you were coming, so I had to, like, rush upstairs and get it all set up. And he said, he's a cowboy. He'll sleep on the floor. That's right. That's not right. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Hopefully I won't get in the way too much. <laughs> no, it'll we'll, be fine. We'll stay outside busy anyhow. Yeah. What are we going to do, man? I'm excited. I'll show you the place, show you what all is going on with the company. And we're doing a lot more brokering than we used to. And everything's been really busy. We'll be doing a lot of traveling, probably, and really going to depend on you. It's kind of a good idea that we do have Andrew around, because I'm going to have lots of side work for him to do. And while I'm gone doing my deal, he can be checking on things around the house. Let's get you stuff and take you upstairs and get you all settled in. All right, let's do it. That's a pretty little spot right here, ain't it? about you, but this is perfect to me. It's so close to your parents, and that school I really wanted him to go to is not that far from here. Booger and I have been looking for property for so long now, and no matter how busy Booger gets, I am not gonna let this fall to the wayside. Besides the fact that this piece of property is so beautiful, the things I like the most about it is the fact that it's so close to Booger's parents' house, and Matthew would get to go to the school that I really want him to go to. 
There's quite a few trees on this place. It's really not that much pasture. If you take in all that, there's about as much woods as there is pasture. But this is a pretty big piece of property. I mean, don't we need to go see the other side before you decide that? And I mean, you can clear some of these woods. And we can leave some woods. I would like to leave a little bit, you know, buffer around the front. We don't have to see the, the road or anything. And even if we clear out some of the woods, that's not that expensive, right? You'll get some money tied up into it. Let's say he's on around the other side and look at the rest of this property. All right. Come on, buddy. Jacqueline is really liking this piece of property. It's beautiful. It's got a lot of pasture, but it also has a lot of woods that can be cleaned up to make even more. We know it needs a lot of work, but it has a really neat little cabin out back with a beautiful pond, and Matthew will love to spend time down there. Look, it's got a little old pond in his cabin. Heck, we could live in that until we get us a house built. Yeah, this is not bad. No. There's a little pond. You know, that's pretty nice in there. It looks like they've done a good job of building. It just needs to be finished and cleaned up a little bit. And that's probably one of the reasons they want to sell everything. It's too much to keep up and never could finish it. I think this cabin's cool. I love the property. I like the place. Really? Yeah, I don't really have a problem with it. You're gonna have to fence, it's gonna need a lot of woods cleaned out, but I've always wanted a piece of property to have something like this on it, you know, like whether yeah. it's at the river or back here on a pond or off in the woods somewhere. I say we'll make an offer on it. Can we do it today? I don't know about today. I've still got to get ready for Texas. I got to pack and get all the stuff together about going out there. I know, but I still think it's something we can work with, don't you? I think it's worth trying. I'm glad we got him shot before we left, you know what? Yeah. He's going to be a busy guy out in Texas. <sighs> well, what all is left do you have to get for him for the trip? Well, Booger and Bubba already got all of our buckets and stuff. All I gotta do is load my saddle. You mean to put some shipping boots on him? No, nah, he'll be fine. We're you gonna... sure? Yeah. I have some leopard ones. No. He'll stand out. Mm -mm. I mean, all of y'all ride a bay. He already stands out. Look he'll stand riding. out with some leopard wraps on him. God, I don't know how long we're gonna be gone. I'm looking forward to going to Texas. I hadn't been out to Texas in a while. And I'm really looking forward to me, Booger, and Bubba getting to trade and cattle more together. We all sell cattle ourselves. We might as well trade some as a company. You know, I think it's a great time to go, meet some good people, and see some new faces. All right, so you got everything handled for the rodeo while I'm gone. Yeah, while you're gone, we're going to pick up all the sponsorship packets, get everything delivered, handed out, and get all of the posters, promotional items. Yeah, and buy our insurance. We had to have insurance. Yes, event insurance. I need to book the ambulance. If anybody has any questions as far as, like, announcers, judges, anything like that, I just run interference while you're out there handling that stuff. And I got some other stuff I'm going to be getting for the rodeo. What? What? Some stuff. Well, don't worry about it. You tell me not to worry. Ah, uh, here. Here, ride awaits. I love you. I love you. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. You know, it seems that you are doing good things. Don't let my little man grow up too fast before I get back. And I'm coming! Love you, baby. Love you, too. Coming up. I mean, that's about what we're looking for in a wad. So, something similar to her or something a little bit more. Man, there's only gonna be a handful of them cows in here, guys. Who's that fella you've been in touch with about this cattle? Levi? Yeah. He said he's got a herd of cattle and they are just what we we're looking for. He said he had a good set of black cows. He said they weren't in bad shape. He'd had enough grass all year because he wasn't that stock that heavy. Did they send you any pictures? He sent some pictures, but I can't get them to load. He said he's gonna try to send something back off his wife's phone later on, but I ain't got my email him to you. He don't email, the guy's got a flip phone. I know a guy that knows a guy that knew a guy that knew Levi, so they put me in touch with him. Hey, he's got a herd of cattle, he's ready to sell, and I believe they're gonna be just what we're looking for. Kinda seems easy. I think it's a dang good idea going out here in Texas where this drought is. I mean, there's folks that's gonna be selling cattle. It's a buyer's market for sure. Maybe he can turn us on to some other people too, we might. You know, find a couple more deals while we're out here. A lot of people, I mean, they're tired of fighting it. Even though they starting to get some rain, they're tired of fighting the situation. Yeah. You know, it's an even better idea that we brought our horses with us, too, because we're liable to pick up a little bit of side job. Make a little gas money. Right. Find a cow that needs catching, we can do it. I don't know if I'd go a week or two without roping something.
Here we are, boys. Welcome to Texas. Get your feet up. Get your feet up. Hold them up. Yeah. Lone Star State. There's some hay for sale. Ooh, $100 a roll. $100? I'm telling you, son. Must have been tough times out here now. Yes, sir. This fan. We've been stuck in this truck all day together. My gosh, we come all the way out here. We might as well enjoy a good meal. Sit down and chat a little while. Thank you, sir, boss. All righty, enjoy. That's some awfully good looking cattle. I mean, you got a brain scale. Still work. I promise you. All the time. If they like cattle right there, they'll be just fine. You talking about nice. <laughs> And Jacqueline. Hey, sweetheart. Hey there. How's it going in Texas? We just got to Texas. We decided to stop and eat a little bit. Here we are enjoying a meal, and I get a call from Jacqueline, and I can tell she is not happy. What'd I do this time? I'm not even home. <sighs> yeah, I just wanted to talk to you about that property that we looked at the other day. So I got some bad news. The real estate agent called me. They've already got a whole bit on it. That fast? <clears throat> really that fast. I mean, it's been for sale for a couple months. I guess it wasn't meant to be, you know, so much stuff going on. I don't know, maybe not, but... I mean, you know how much I liked it. Right. Tell you what, as soon as I get home, if there's, you find some property that we need to go look at, I promise you, I will go look at it. You can count on it. Hold me to it. <laughs> Trust me, I will. What's my boy doing? Is he riding his horse? Yeah. All right, sweetie, we're gonna finish eating. I love you, and we'll talk to you later on. All right. Love okay, you. love you, bye. What was Jacqueline and Matthew up to? Jacqueline found a piece of property, and she wanted to make an offer on it. When the wife asks something, you, you gotta do everything you can to make sure that you make it happen. Right now, what we're doing coming out here, we ain't gonna do this every time. Once we get it set up, well, you meet some customers. Yeah. You meet some people you trust yeah. and you know, then you can do it before. Right. Man, all them old cow sellers and cow buyers, I say them couple good customers got them through the good times and the bad. Mm -hmm. They stay steady all the way through. Yeah. We need to get on the road, boys. I'm ready to get this cow deal situated. Already? Yes, yes, sir. Let's get out of here. Let's roll. Got about three more miles up here around this curve. It right here. Mm. Bunch of hideous cows. Ain't the cows we come to look at. Where's the crossbred cows at? Dang, I'm an old bull. Looks like he's had a rough summer. We need some cattle with some air on them. They are thin, ain't they? Well, let's get out and make sure we're at the right place. You know, we can already tell these cattle is not what Mr. Tice needs. There's some good Brangus cattle scattered through them, but these cattle are mostly straight Angus. Not saying they're bad cattle at all. They're just not what our customer wants. You Mr. Levi? Yes, sir. Good to see you, Booger Brown. Bubba Thompson. Yes, Levi. sir. Cody Harris. Levi. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, Are these the cattle you got in mind? Yes, sir. I just pulled the calves off of these cows uh, two weeks ago, and they ought to all be bred back. I thought you said you had some uh, crossbred cows. These here about straight Angus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, they ain't, they ain't got a lot of ear on them. There's one or two, like this old 459. She's crossed up a little bit. She'd be, I mean, that's about what we're looking for in a wad. So, something similar to her or something a little bit more. Man, there's only gonna be a handful of them cows in here, guys. You know, this was supposed to be our first big deal as a company. All of us three together trading cattle. And this deal has not gone the way we were supposed to. We should have done our homework before we even left the house to make sure these Brangus cattle were actually good Brangus cattle. I mean, I'm gonna call a spade a spade, and right now this trip is a complete waste of time. Mr. Levi, I'll be honest with you, we need some good crossbred cows. They just ain't what we're looking for. Man, the, the, I just ain't got no hay. Between the army worms and, and the drought we've been in, it's just so crucial around here, man. It's gonna cost me money to keep these cows, and I need to move them. Coming up. Why are you want to get rid of these things anyways? We've been in a drought. You know, the hay season's been terrible. The hay season's over now, Yes, huh? the hay season's done. Man, I'm probably about 250 bales short. I need to sell these cattle. Why are you wanting to get rid of these things anyways? We've been in a drought. 
you know, the hay season's been terrible. Hay season's over now, Yes, huh? the hay season's done. Man, I'm probably about 250 bales short. I need to sell these cattle. The guy that wants these cattle, he was wanting like a 3 8 cross type cow or heifer, whatever it may be, something, because where we're from, it stays hot. Our summers are so long and hot in Alabama. You need cattle with ear. When you have ear, that means their hide's really loose, tight. They can handle the heat. You take a real English type Angus cow in the middle of July in South Alabama. She'll be laying up under the shade tree in the middle of the day. You take that same Rammer Cross type cow, she'll be grazing in the middle of the day. If we show back up to Alabama with that set of cows, he'd buy the cattle. I'm here to tell you, he'd pay us for them, but he wouldn't come back to us again for another set. Yeah, he yes, wants sir. a good set of crossbred cattle. And not that he don't like the cattle, that the order he'd give us. Mm -hmm. yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? Hey, this ain't gonna work for us, bud. I don't know where we had the miscommunication, but it happens. Well, we sorry we wasted your time, Mr. Levi. No, I'm sorry yep. I wasted your all buddy. Pleasure That's to meet you, though. Man. Man. Yes, Pleasure to meet you. Who knows? I can't believe we drove out here for this. So we wasted all this time and all this money. Not to mention, I've, we've all had to be stuck in a truck with each other all day. Absolutely. You know, really, it's a good thing we drove out here. I figured. Because if we had bought these cattle sight unseen, we'd have a bunch of Angus cows on our hand right now. We'd have a mad customer, or we'd be sitting there with them in our lap trying to find somebody to buy Angus cows. Well, now I gotta call Mr. Tyson, let him know the bad news. We'll call him, man. He's gonna be upset with us, you know that. I know he's counting on having some cattle sent to him because he's got all that grass right now. Tell him, tell him what's up. We're doing all we can do. After looking at these cattle, we can tell these are not gonna work for Mr. Chuck Ty. So the right thing to do is to call Mr. Chuck and let him know that the cattle that we drove all the way out here to look at are not gonna fit his deal. Hey, Mr. Chuck. Hey, man, it's Bubba. Well. We just got done looking at some cattle a man was trying to sell us, and they are all straight Angus. No, sir, they don't have any ear, and they're not really crossbred. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chuck. Yeah. We appreciate you understanding. Yes, sir. All right, well, you have a good one, too. See ya. What did he say? He's gotten a little frustrated, but, uh, you know, he told us not to give up and keep looking for some cattle, and he's still got a few more days before he really wants cattle to show up in his place. He's still on our side. We're already here. He said, that's why I hired y'all to do this job. He said, y'all yeah. three are the men for the job. He said, I got faith in you. You know, Mr. Tice, he's real understanding. He's way more understanding than I thought he was gonna be, but hey, he still needs some cattle. He ain't got a problem with giving us another shot. I think the best thing for us to do is just stay right here in Texas, keep sniffing around and see what we can come up with. We shouldn't have put all our eggs in one basket. Well, you know, it's a start. And we just got here too, fellas, no. you know, so ain't no sense in us getting, keeping our heads down. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Get on the road and get out of here. Boys, y'all can't be down. This is just the beginning of the journey. <laughs>